In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about step 5 of the protein sequencing that is limited cleavage of the peptide into overlapping smaller fragment. Now to understand this step, I am going to take one example of this hypothetical polypeptide chain. Suppose this is our hypothetical polypeptide chain. This is the N terminal site and this is the C terminal site. We will also assume that this amino acid sequence of this polypeptide is the 50 amino acid long. So, 50 amino acid long, right? Now, based on step 3, we can identify N terminal amino acid and based on step 4, we can identify C terminal amino acid. Both the steps I had covered in my previous video. So, suppose over here, the N terminal amino acid is the glutamate and one letter code for the glutamate is E. And suppose C terminal amino acid is the aspartate and one letter code for the aspartate is D. Whenever we want to describe amino acid sequence of any polypeptide chain, the most convenient, convenient way is the one letter code for the amino acids, right? So, here also in this video also, I am going to use this one letter code. Now, we know that in step 3, we had learned about admin procedure, admin procedure. Now, this admin procedure, it can identify certain number of amino acid from this N terminal site. The biggest disadvantage of this admin procedure is that, that it can identify only 30 to 40 amino acids from this N terminal site, right? So, of course, in this case, we cannot use directly this admin procedure. Why? Because it is the 50 amino acid long. And this is again hypothetical example. In reality, in real world, your protein, uh, your amino acid sequence or polypeptide, it can be hundreds or thousands amino acid long. So, of course, we cannot use admin procedure directly. So, what to do? So, the strategy is that this polypeptide chain, we can break it down into the smaller pieces, right? And this breaking down should be a specific one. It should not be a random cleavage on the polypeptide chain, right? We have to specifically cut this polypeptide chain so that it can be converted to the smaller fragment, right? So, for that, we have one enzyme that is trypsin, trypsin which is isolated from the bovine pancreas, bovine pancreas. Now, this trypsin from the bovine pancreas is very specific. It will first locate lysine or arginine from any on any polypeptide chain, right? Once this lysine or arginine are located, then it put up a cut on the carboxy terminal side. So, C side cut is put by this trypsin. Does it act on the random site? No, it acts whenever lysine is present or arginine is present at particular location. Once these are identified, then only it will put up a cut on this carboxy terminal site. Okay. One letter code for the lysine is the K and one letter code for the arginine is the R. So, suppose we mix up this polypeptide chain with this enzyme and this trypsin will put up a cut at certain locations, at certain specific location. And suppose we are getting five fragments, five pieces of polypeptide. So, suppose this is first piece, this is second piece, this is third piece, this is fourth piece and this is the fifth piece. We will call it as a T1, T2, T3, T4 and T5. Now, later on, we can separate this all the fragments by the chromatography or electrophoresis, right? But here the problem is that we do not know what is the sequence of amino acid in this each fragment. We also know, we also do not know that whether which one is the first fragment, which one is the second fragment like that. We do not have any knowledge about that. But here we have one advantage. The advantage is that these fragments have less number of amino acid. So, we can apply admin procedure admin procedure to each of this fragment and we can determine amino acid sequence of these fragments individually so suppose amino acid sequence of each of this fragment is this one so i will just copy paste it okay so these are the sequence of each of this fragment so this is the t1 this is t2 this is T3, T4 and T5. We do not know which one is the first fragment, which one is the second fragment. So, 
for that we can easily determine as we know that n terminal amino acid is this e and c terminal amino acid is the d so whichever fragment which is starting amino acid as a e that will be our first fragment whichever fragment which is ending amino acid as a d that will be our last fragment so in this case this fragment starts with the e so this is the first fragment right and out of this five sequence only this sequence is ending with the d so this is the last fragment or you can say fifth fragment right what will be the sequence of this three fragment that we don't know so now what to do so now we have to use other agent to break down this polypeptide chain and as a second agent we can use cyanogen bromide again this cyanogen bromide this chemical it does not put up random cuts on this polypeptide chain it has specific action what is the specificity the cyanogen bromide it always puts up a cut wherever methionine is present one letter code for the methionine is m and once it identify methionine it puts up a cut on the c terminal side so cut on c terminal side so suppose by the action of cyanogen bromide this polypeptide chain is divided into four fragment so four fragment we will call them as a c1 c2 c3 and c4 so suppose this is first fragment this is second this is third and this is fourth so we have four fragment here also we don't know the amino acid sequence of each of these fragment so just like trypsin we can follow admin procedure over here admin procedure over here and we can identify amino acid sequence of each of these fragment so i will just copy paste it so now by following admin procedure we had determined amino acid sequence of each of these fragment so this is c1 c2 c3 and c4 and now again based on the knowledge about the n terminal amino acid and c terminal amino acid we can identify which one is the first fragment and which one is the fragment so the fragment starting with the e that will be our first fragment so here this is starting with the e so this is become our first fragment and the uh, fragment which ends with the d so this fragment is ending with the d so this becomes our last fragment okay and in this case it is the fourth fragment as it has only four pieces right so now based on this two cleavage pattern we can determine the amino acid sequence of the complete polypeptide chain now it is just a matter of solving the puzzle so here we have first fragment is this one right so i will just write e c d e c d g double a y r g double a y r this is our fragment right this is the t2 fragment trip cut by the trypsin here the first fragment is this one by the cyanogen bromide so the sequence is matching right e c d g double a y r e c d g double a y r so rest we have to write down so this becomes uh, h d g h d g then h f e p m h f e p m so this is the fragment by the cyanogen bromide that is the c4 right now let's come to over here so here we have h d g h which fragment is starting with that so this fragment so h d g h f e p m h d g h f e p m so i have to write i d i l n p r i d i l n p r so this is the fragment by the trypsin and which one is this fragment t5 t5 so now we have to look into the cyanogen bromide fragment which starts with this sequence so i d i l n p r so here we have i d i l n p r so i have to add g a v s m so g a v s m so this become a fragment by the cyanogen bromide that is c2 now g a v s m into this trypsin so here we have g a v s m so i have to add a g t l i k a g t l i k so this is the fragment of this t4 right so t4 now in the cyanogen bromide a g t l i k so that is over here a g t l i k 
so i have to write down y l i a c g p m y l i a c g p m right so this become this fragment right c3 so now y l i a c g p m so that is y l i a c g p m i have to just write down this t k and it becomes a fragment by this trypsin so this fragment is t3 t3 now the starting with the tk in cyanogen bromide so that is this fragment i have to write down dcvhsd dcvhsd so this become a fragment that is a c1 and in this trypsin we have dcvhsd dcvhsd so this is the fragment by trypsin that is the t1 so now this is the complete amino acid sequence of the polypeptide chain under question. So, this last step is just a matter of solving a puzzle. In this example, we had seen trypsin and cyanogen bromide as a specific cleaving agents of the polypeptide chain. But remember, there are many more different reagents are available which can specifically cleave the polypeptide chain. So, in this table, all the different reagents and chemicals are shown which can cleave particular polypeptide chain in a specific way and that specificity is also mentioned in this table. So, I hope everything is clear in this step 5 that is limited cleavage of the peptide chain into overlapping smaller fragment. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down into the comment section below. Thank you.